How's everybody doing? Welcome back to the channel and a second video on the UT705 process calibrator from UNIT. Uh, in this video we're just going to do a little tear down on the unit to see what the quality of the build is like and then at the end of the video I'll do a battery test to see what kind of life we'll get out of a battery. You can see I've already broken the unit open. Uh, this is the rear part of the clamshell and you can see here this is a battery compartment cover that goes in. Uh, there is no brass insert for the battery lid screw uh, which is here for the compartment lid and there's the screw uh, it also doesn't uh, captivate so it's uh, easy enough to lose if you're not careful uh, inside the actual rear part of the clamshell uh, there's no shielding whatsoever inside this uh, and there is a little uh, connector port up here as well that I didn't realise I didn't see it on the instructions either I never noticed it um, so I'm not 100% sure what that's for or whether it's uh, for one of the other models, for use in one of the other models that they have. Uh, battery compartment, the battery lead is soldered direct onto the PCB so it goes through that little slot and they've provided a little cover to help retain it in there as well, uh, which is quite a nice feature. And that's pretty much all there is to it apart from obviously the build, I guess it's the softer rubber moulding is glued onto the harder plastic and you can see we've got a lip that goes inside this for keeping out the dirt slash any internal damage that might occur that uh, moulds into the actual male part of the lip here on the front part of the clamshell. Uh, case itself is held together by three screws, one there, one there and one at the top there, that's those three screws up here, uh, just standard screws, nothing special about them. So we can take a closer look at the PCB itself. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. So you can see here there's the uh, designation on the board for the UT705, looks like version 0.04, uh, 28th of 3rd 2019, it's dated. Uh, I presume that's the design date rather than the actual manufacture date. Uh, there's our four input jacks. Uh, the ring tabs here soldered onto the PCB and then they are screwed into the input jacks themselves with four little screws. The little screws also do have a small little bit of uh, retaining glue on them as well. Um, although I didn't kind of feel it when it was uh, undoing them. It wasn't overly noticeable. It's a quite a nice design really. Your actual pressure, mechanical pressure of unplugging and plugging in the jacks on the other side is taken by the plastic moulding and then that leaves this three just screwed on so there's no mechanical stress on this to protect the solder joints so that's quite a nice design feature. Um, as we look through here there's no real input protection on these but having said that these are obviously designed for working on control and instrumentation you know, 30 volts DC maximum so they should never be subjected to any form of input spikes really. Uh, the only thing that I can see is these devices here. I might have to get a close-up of them. They have designated MZ21s um, and they are actually uh, labelled as a F300 and F30 on the other side. So I presume there's some sort of resettable fuse. Uh, but I can't find much about them really. Uh, other two devices here, we've got a N-channel MOSFET and a P-channel MOSFET. I presume they're for driving the actual outputs are microcontrollers here we've got two here these are the uh, CS8051F340 from Silicon Labs they're 8 bit 48 megahertz microcontrollers uh, two of them in there and then this larger final chip up here that's a CS1621CGO LCD driver uh, from Wuxi iCore Electrical and then as we get more towards the top of the board you see here's our battery connect here that's soldered in onto the actual PCB which he, hence the use of the clip and the back part of the battery compartment um, otherwise you have to desolder this and it is also glued on as well to provide a bit more protection which is a, another nice feature a little speaker here and then this here is the connector where the lead from the little port on the rear clamshell plugs into um, you can see hopefully down here there is space for another chip to go in here but it's not populated on this design so that's maybe that it's used for one of the other 
more market designs in this process calibrator collection that Unity do. And that's our main board there. So the board is held in with form screws here on here, these little small ones that you can see over here. That's just, these are the little small screws. Um, so not much holding the board in, but most of it is held in at this back end um, and around the middle, I guess, where your actual function buttons are. Um, and it just lifts out to reveal the other side. And we can have a quick look at, and there's the uh, PCB tracks for the push buttons. And that's all there is on there really. It's alongside the LCD, of course, which is screwed and also clipped in here as well. So we won't be removing that. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. It's in general, uh, PCB is quite nice. There's no real soldering blobs on there. Um, input jacks look quite secure and there's no modification to the board that I can see in any way, shape or form. It's uh, quite nice and clean inside. So in that respect, it's a, a reasonable quality build, I would say. Um, just look at the uh, front case. Obviously not much to see. You've got the uh, inserts there that take you into the input jacks that the ring turn will screw into. And then we've just got the uh, carbon pads for the push buttons on the front. Uh, and that's it really. Uh, nice and clean inside. There's no residue left over, no markings from the plastic or anything. Uh, all quite nice. Uh, so yeah, what we'll do is we'll screw it all back together and we'll run it up on a DC power supply to see how much life we can get out of the battery. So just a quick shot there with the PCB back reinstalled. Uh, you can see the four screws there holding the ring terminals onto the jacks. Uh, there's the screws holding it. PCB all into the front of the case and there's our lead that comes from the port plugged in there and our battery connector that goes through our little clip housing there. So fairly reasonable in that respect. Uh, we can uh, close it all back up and put our uh, three main screws in. And then we'll set up a DC power supply and just see how the battery performs. Um, I have uh, been running this from a rechargeable cell, the, this EBL cell. Uh, it's rechargeable if we can get the light off of it. Uh, 600 milliamp. I've not had any problems. Um, so uh, it looks to be all good in that respect. It'd just be interesting because generally uh, rechargeable cells do run on a slightly lower voltage than the standard alkaline. So we are set up with our power supply here. We've put it to nine volts and we're currently drawing 0.11 amps on the output. The UT705 here, we have set to source 24.5 milliamps, which is its maximum. It can source and you can see, you can confirm that's coming out there on the LB02 here that's reading 24.491. Uh, we'll just turn the light on actually. And that will give us a little bit more. So we are now 0.2 amps, 1.8 watts. So that's a fair bit coming from a nine volt battery, isn't it? Yeah, okay. So what we'll do is we'll start to wind down the voltage and we'll see what happens to our battery indicator up there. So we do some point. So 7.2 volts, we lose the first bar on the battery. So we lose the second bar at 6.8 volts, and then going down, then we lose it at 6.4, the third bar, and the final bar goes at six volts. And we've lost the light, so let's just turn the light back on. So the light does still work on at six volts as well. Uh, let's keep going down till we actually shut off and see what happens. Here we go, 5.1 volts, and we've shut off. Uh, see if we can restart. Oh, doesn't like to restart, does it? Try it at 5.5. No, doesn't like that either. Let's try it at 6 volts. Like it at six either, does it? 
So whilst it will work down to a lower voltage, it doesn't always want to, uh, six and a half volts, it will start to, uh, let's come back now. So six and a half volts, you need to actually get the unit to start up. However, once you're operating, it will run down to uh, five volts. Now obviously that's with this power supply, with a battery, um, it may be a bit more of an issue because the internal resistance of this is much lower. It can put out much more current than a, a, a basic nine volt battery can do. Uh, what I will just do, just out of interest, because I've been running it from this rechargeable battery, uh, nine volt cell here, down the front here, and we'll just put this over to measure on volts. Uh, mm, there. Measure volts and just see uh, what it's at. Uh, so this is 7.906 volts. And that's been working perfectly fine, no problems. So it uh, doesn't like really negative voltages. Yeah, that happens with a lot of these calibrators. They, they don't like reverse voltages and reverse currents. Obviously the Uni-T is exactly the same in that. Um, yeah. No, but there you go. Fairly respectable performance from the battery, I would say. Uh, the build, yeah, it's not too bad, is it? A couple of areas I'd like to see improved, especially with regard to the battery compartment, having a, a brass insert for the screw there, uh, rather than just the plastic, given the price of the instrument. But it's not overall, it's not that bad. It is quite a bit more in comparison to some of the other instruments and it does lack a little bit of functionality but that's up for the individual users to what they want from their test equipment I guess. Um, that'll be it for this video, thanks for watching, hope you found it useful and I'll see you again in the next one.